Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Oh, D'Anthony. D'Anthony, D'Anthony, firing up the White Claws. I'm a little truly girl myself. Huh? <laughs> Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. He's been on before. He's back. You know him as the bald baby, Baker Levitt is here. How are you, Baker? I, I like to call him Baker Gordon Levitt. <laughs> and pretend that they're related. Yeah. But they're not. No, they're not. Clearly. Definitely not. You can tell. You're not related okay. to, to, to Gordon, are you? No. No. Okay. And I'll tell you something fascinating about my last name. I'm 44 years old and I've been all over the world and I have never in my life met someone with the same last name as me. Really? Never once. <clears throat> well, well, whomever uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt's dad is, probably, I guess, because it's, it's hyphenated, right? Yeah, or that's yeah, yeah. The, Gordon is his mom's maiden name. I imagine. Who knows? Anybody with a hyphen um, is confused. If, if my wife asked me for a hyphenated name, I, that would be the end of it. I think. Yeah, I mean, you can't. She'd be a hyphenate. That, that's the worst. Is a male that's a hyphenate. There's nothing lower. Is that oh, some, that's yeah. Progressive. Like like Joseph. Um, for you though, are you gonna have to change your name because it's got racial? Your last name's got racial connotations to it. My middle name does. What is it? Black. Black. Yeah. Is it black? Mm -hmm. No way! I didn't know that. Yeah. What was that? What was that after your your ancestors? My my mother's maiden name was Nancy Black, and she got married to my father Don Levitt. Ah, Nancy gotcha, Black. gotcha. Uh, Baker Levitt. It's funny you say that. So we're we're here to talk about CrossFit today, um, and the fucking collapse of the goddamn industry. I was in a CrossFit class maybe I don't know an hour and a half ago, right? And we were just talking about last names and birthrights and all that other bullshits. My name's Ross because uh, Betsy Ross, like that name was in my family for years and years and years from Pennsylvania and all that other shit. You're a colonialist? Y yes. Uh, these, so one of the, they always start off CrossFit, and I don't know if they do this at, at yours, but they always start, start off the CrossFit class with some form of question, you know, that kind of makes you think and introduce yourself to the class. Do they do that for you guys? No. Okay, so ours does, and every day there's a new question of the day that we have to answer, and it kind of helps you get to know the other people a little better. <laughs> and this one was your heritage today. It was like, where do you come from, and how far back can you trace your family and all that shit? So uh, my entire life I've been told and thought I was Irish because I'm 5'10", stocky, and I have red hair. And <laughs> I, I did, I did uh, 23 and Me and found out I'm no, not Irish at all. Same thing happened to my wife. So her, her mom told her that uh, she was Mexican, half Mexican, her entire life. She ends up doing a 23 and Me, finds out there was no Mexican whatsoever, and it was Italian. And Jesse went and lied to everybody for 35 years and said she was a Mexican. Yeah, I'm from foggy London town, like both sides. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. What about you, Dan? Do you even know? <laughs> yes. No. I don't know. I'm, uh, let's see, my family uh, from my dad's side is from Ireland, and then his... His grandmother was a full blood Cherokee Indian. Okay. Uh, if, they, oh, if, you're, if you're allowed to say that anymore, I don't know. No, you can't. Um, and then my mom's oh. side of the family is like Irish English, and then they have a lot of French Jewish people that made their way down here through uh, Canada, I believe it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's America, America. America's top hat. Yeah, yeah. I uh, can trace my, uh, like I said, I can trace my family back to like the 1700s or 1600s in Pennsylvania. So after that, there was kind of no need for me to check out what was going on in like Europe or in that other. Yeah, shit. I don't really care. To yeah, be me honest. neither. I mean, I look like a fucking mutt. I've got six different colors of hair in my face alone. Yeah. So obviously, there's been a little, you know. Why don't you see if you can get citizenship? Oh man, I don't care. I don't even care about citizenship here. I mean, <laughs> like I just do what I want, anyways. What difference does it make? <laughs> See, see, you guys aren't wearing masks. No, not no. at all. Uh, no, and our governor just yeah. said it's mandatory. And Roy I, Cooper can suck my dick. I sir, walked, if you're watching, and I say sir because of the office, not because of you, you're a piece of shit, uh, but you can suck my dick. Every single inch. You can put it all eight right in the back of your mouth. And that, that last three is going to be a street fight too, my man. Uh, Baker, you were a CrossFit messiah. You were the guru of it. I was forced to join because of said governor, that D'Anthony, uh, was talking about a moment ago. Gyms have been shut down here since March. There is an underground, this is no lie, there's an underground CrossFit that is open, <clears throat> but it's locked. You have to knock. There's a... A, a speakeasy? A, yes, it is a speakeasy CrossFit. We are isolated on mats. We're not allowed to work out in groups or anything like that together. There is only allowed to be seven of us in there, and if 
the police were to come or the governor, whoever the, the Gestapo that they send after mm. you, you have to be a sponsored athlete. Hence, KillCliffCBD.com uh, is my sponsorship. Well, there's a bunch my of my athletic build. Um, after Roy Moore's bullshit yesterday, a bunch of sheriffs in North Carolina said, yeah, we're not enforcing that. You can get fucked. Oh, uh, Roy Cooper. Roy Cooper. Yeah, yeah, you said Roy Moore. No, Roy Moore is the pedophile. Different guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, different guy. Whatever. Well, what's what's interesting is that the lieutenant governor of North Carolina is suing. Yeah. Going to sue the governor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the I, fuck is going on? Well, we were the, I, if you remember, we were the transgendered bathroom states that uh, we had a Republican governor here, Pat McCrory, and he would not bend the knee to opening up uh transgender bathrooms or allowing trans to use both bathrooms they took away the all-star game and a bunch of other things and blah 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 uh so after that he got voted out they put a democrat in it's it's roy cooper and i he seems to be the, the most liberal one in the entire country um therefore i'm in crossfit for the last two months and i'm not a crossfit guy uh but the exercise is fine um with that being said in my crossfit class there has been a fucking upheaval over what happened to uh, the creator of CrossFit. If you wouldn't mind explaining what happened uh, and who this gentleman is, that would be fantastic. There's a lot of people in CrossFit that listen to this show. I have been going... Dan and I talked, was it a week ago about this? Dan, you sent me a text. You go, what the fuck's going on? I think it was almost... I think it was two weeks ago, actually, when he yeah. first said some dumb shit, yeah. whenever it was. So <clears throat> I've been kind of going back and forth on like how to tell that story, my side of the story of CrossFit. And then Andy Stump came out with his bombshell uh, uh, piece. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Andy's is different than mine. Andy worked for CrossFit and Greg Glassman for years. All right. Uh, I never worked for CrossFit. Um, I was uh, a participant, a regional athlete. Most people don't know that at one point. Um, and, uh, dated a young, wonderful young lady for seven years who qualified for the games four years in a row, regionals every year. Um, Tupu, the company I started in grad school in 2010, was a vendor of the CrossFit Games going back to 2011, the first year they had the games in, in Carson, California, at the Home Depot Center. Mm -hmm. um, Killcliffe, another company I helped start, uh, was, an, was a vendor and actually an official game sponsor, regional sponsor in um, – of the invitational sponsor of that as well. Um, so heavily involved in the space for many years. Um, Melissa girlfriend uh, in Florida now whom I live with uh, actually owns East Norman beach CrossFit. So um, I can't get away from the shit. So um, I didn't know how to kind of tell the story. And I just, last night I decided I'm just going to start from the beginning. So, so Greg Glassman, I'm going to, I need to paint a picture of, of, of him mm -hmm. for people to really understand what's going on. So, um, Greg Glassman, his entire life, as I understand it, was kind of a piece of shit, failed at everything he'd ever done. <clears throat> not good at anything. Um, it sounds like you're describing the, the head of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. And then he got lucky with one idea. Was that kind of, yeah, that's you. That's a walk off home run right there. Ross. That's okay. basically what happened. So, you have a guy who's uh, secure in some facets of his life, uh, his knowledge of CrossFit and exercise phys physiology. What the guy knows, what the guy did, how he did it, and all that stuff is phenomenal. Helped hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. Um, but he himself, uh, just because you know, you're a piece of shit, for lack of a better phrase, doesn't mean that you can't do or accomplish great things. Um, and Glassman's just kind of one of those just shit bags and – uh, hired a bunch of yes men, surrounded himself with yes men, uh, all wildly, wildly underqualified for anything. 90% of these people were underqualified for their jobs. Um, overpaid them so they wouldn't leave, and no one ever really challenged the guy. So, I mean, you just you, you take some nefarious piece of shit, and then when he's 40 years old, you give him millions and millions of dollars, and then for the next decade, you give him unlimited money, basically. And it's going to enable him to do and say some really wacky shit. So we're dealing with a shit bag. All right. So what he did was it started the first kind of <laughs> shot was there was an affiliate owner in Washington state. She owned rocket CrossFit. Um, 
And she kind of, for the most part, appointed herself as the social justice warrior of CrossFit. Like she didn't work for CrossFit HQ. She wasn't an employee, but somehow like she kind of finagled her way into the social justice warrior and would lead the charge with all this stuff. So it started several years ago when Russell Berger, uh, who worked for CrossFit HQ um, and was one of Greg Glassman's hitmen, uh, still a good friend of mine. Um, it was, I think it was like International Lesbian Day or something. And he basically made a post saying that being homosexual is a sin, according to the Bible. And this is but Greg? Also, no, this is Russell Berger. Okay. I'm just going to paint a quick little picture. Sure. So she led the charge in getting him fired. It wasn't on the CrossFit HQ. It was on his stuff. All right. He made this post. And if you look at his argument, it's like, well, you know, at the same time, no sin, according to the Bible, is greater than any other sin. And that's what he said. But these people went fucking Except nuts. for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's the worst one for God you damn it. theological um, scholars out there. Yeah. Uh, so what happened was she picks up the mantle and leads the charge, gets Berger fired. Um, <clears throat> and what's the name of the religious organization that goes after persecution? What is it? The Freedom Organization? Freedom from, Freedom from Religion Foundation. FFRF. Yeah, they, they fucking lit Greg up in CrossFit. Settled for probably, I think, half a million or north of that with Berger. Um, and so that shit kind of, that was her like, Kind of by, by the way, the Freedom from Religion Foundation is a anti-religion or organization, but they still represent people that get. No, no, that, that's not them. No, this is this is like a a, a Christian organ. It's a Christian. Oh, it's bar. probably it's probably Jay Sekulow then. Uh, what, what's I don't the, know. That, I don't remember if I heard the name. I think I remember, but it's a I'm Christian sorry. bar that goes around lighting people the fuck up for persecuting. Uh, um, firing Christians, whatever. So she winds up costing some glass and a half a million bucks. ACLJ, right. American Center for Law and Justice. That's probably who it is. Yeah. Fast forward two years, and this whole thing with um, CrossFit, uh, George uh, Floyd comes to pass. Mm -hmm. She's demanding and rallying the troops, demanding what is CrossFit HQ's stance on racism and oppression and, and, and the murder of George Floyd and blah, 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 blah. And um, he emails her back and, you know, basically says, who appointed you the moral authority for CrossFit HQ? Who do you think you are? I think your hatred for, you know, conservatism and President Trump or blah, blah, blah has made you sick in the head. And frankly, I'm ashamed of you. Huge mistake. She publishes it, rallies the troops. Everyone gets fucking worked up. Um, so everyone's kind of primed. And then the George, uh, you know, the George Floyd incident, they get on a Zoom call with a bunch of affiliates because CrossFit HQ is, um, uh, you know, working with their uh, affiliate owners. And one of the, I was a female affiliate owner from Minnesota, asked him about George Floyd. And he's like, you know, I don't mourn the death of George Floyd. Um, my staff doesn't mourn his death to say that systemic racism exists is insane and cops aren't racist and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, so that gets kind of released and now everyone's in a tizzy you've <clears throat> got, uh, and then, and then he's not done. Um, he's arguing online with some health organization about the protest and stuff. And he's, does a tweet and says Floyd 19. Yeah. And yeah. I saw that one too. Was the straw that kind of broke the camel's back and all these, I mean like all these fucking affiliates start going insane and losing their fucking minds. And we're deaffiliating, which what's funny is a lot of them didn't pay their affiliate dues three months prior. They were already deaffiliating. Can you um, can, real quick, can you tell the audience what the affiliate dues are? I heard it's 25,000 to franchise. And then what are the, the, the affiliate no, dues? And I could be incorrect no. on that. Yeah, so, okay. a, so it, it's it's back in the day when it started, your affiliate in the right to use CrossFit in your name was 500 bucks. Oh, shit. That's it? Okay. Well, and it went up a little bit each year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think in 2014, 15, or 16, I don't remember what year it was, he capped it at $3,500 a year. Okay. That's it. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure it stayed that. So if you were a new, so if you, your grandfather didn't at your level, so if you joined back in 2009, 2010, like you're 500 a year. Um, 
and then depending on when you know your affiliate open, that's what level you're at. But I don't think it's gone up above thirty five hundred a month. Okay, and uh, and how many of those would you say exist in the nation? How many CrossFit gyms? They say fifteen thousand. Gotcha. I want everyone to listen to me. That is a fucking lie. That's not true. There's nowhere near fifteen thousand affiliates in this country. Really? I mean, in the, no, not nowhere near. It. Nowhere near. It. What do you Probably, think? Yeah. I, what do you think the, the yeah, number is? Thousand. Under 10,000 for sure, because okay. CrossFit's taken a, a, a hit the past few years with affiliates opening. There was a, at one point there was uh, a few years ago, there was more affiliates de-affiliating and closing than actually opening because their, their CrossFit level one cert uh, numbers are way, way down, like way down, not even close to what they used to be. Certification. So you get your L1 certification. That's how you become a licensed trainer and it allows you to apply to open an affiliate. Um, so, you know, so all these affiliate owners, everyone's going completely fucking insane. All these affiliate owners are, you know, de-affiliating and making a stand. And then all the games athletes, which I don't know who gives a shit what they have to say. Actually, it's kind of comical to me um, because the CrossFit Games was a huge financial loss for CrossFit every single year. Like they, it, I think back in when it was at the Home Depot Center in Carson, <clears throat> California, I think it cost and they lost like six, seven, eight million dollars a year. Even with all the advertising? Well, yeah, because the, like, so for example, the Home Depot Center, StubHub Center now, I think is what it's called. Um, if someone set a foot on that soccer field, one shoe touched it, they had to replace the entire field when the games were over. That was a quarter of a million dollars. The, they, they leased the, the venue for I think it was two weeks straight, maybe three weeks, and it's thirty grand a day. Whew. And that doesn't include electricity and all that shit that costs to run the facility. I don't believe. Right. And so you're looking. I mean, it, it, and then you got to have you know people, equipment, production, and yeah. And, and and like so, when they would do the open, they'd advertise the open and stuff. Each one of those trucks, mm-hmm. you know, a, a you know like a big ESPN or yeah. sports production truck. Yeah. That's a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, Just and then, and then you have up. your insurance certs on top of that from a production standpoint. Like that's Lod- that's going lodging, way up. I mean, yeah. you've got lodging for staff, you know, food for. I mean, it just the numbers never end. Like they just keep adding up. Um, but so you have all these games athletes making all these stands, and then you've got a bunch of SMEs and former employees stand uh, making statements, and then kind of the eight hundred pound gorilla. Uh, in the room, which I have personally, my interactions, individual interactions, one-on-one with Greg Glassman have been very limited. They've always been actually pleasant. Um, but he is a, a creepy guy. Like, and apparently there's a bunch of stuff that's come out. Andy Stump, you know, sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been, people, our fans have been talking about Andy's uh, show on it, but we, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Can you summarize what he said? Well, I mean, so... So uh, Andy Stump, his podcast is uh, cleared hot. Cleared hot, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Great show. Uh, he, yeah, and Andy's Andy's really good at um, sitting down and composing his thoughts in an mm-hmm. organized fashion and then delivering them. I, I'm not. I don't do that. I just sit down and wing shit. Um, and then as I talk, the more I talk, the more I remember. Um, but he kind of go. Andy Andy was um, a flow master for CrossFit HQ. He was. Uh, he was Greg Glassman's pilot. Um, that's one thing Andy, Andy can fly. Like, I think Andy can fly up to like a Gulfstream 550. I like actually, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, he's got all kinds of like crazy ratings. Um, so he was his pilot. He flew him around, uh, drove him around. Um, that was like, his, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, like one of his first jobs. And saw and heard and interacted and just a bunch of really nasty shit and like. Andy's uh, so Andy was a seal. He was at Damn Neck for uh, many years. Um, stellar, stellar reputation in the seal community. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think you can find someone to say anything bad about Andy. And I've known Andy a long time, and Andy's a lot of things. But one thing, uh, Andy is not. Andy is not a liar. Andy's an honest guy. Mm-hmm. So when he says stuff like that, I and, and he doesn't like. He doesn't joke around like we do and say a bunch of silly shit. You know, right, like, right. He's a pretty serious uh, guy. Yeah. 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 It, 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 exactly. And he's a serious guy. So, um, just a bunch of sexual harassment stuff and like really fucking just deplorable behavior. So, um, I would suggest going and giving it a listen if you're really mm-hmm. curious. 
And that's where the story gets interesting. So CrossFit made an announcement yesterday that um, there's a new owner. You know, the deal closes next month. Yeah, it's the guy from uh, Boulder, Colorado, that runs the box out there. Well, well, he sold his company to Oracle for one point four billion. Um, ah, he's, shit. He's not a he's not a CrossFit gym owner. I mean, yes, he owns a gym, but like, yeah, yeah, he's a he's a, a businessman. Yeah, yeah, which is what CrossFit needs. Um, well, I mean, otherwise, like Dave is in there right now, and I doubt he wants to be a CEO, right? Dave Castro doesn't want to be CEO, does he? Yeah. Sure <laughs> well, you heard as it opposed, here first. As, to, as opposed to what? Out the door? Um, I don't know. I mean, what's a, low, a lower position, you know, yeah, something a VP with, or something like, underneath it? There's an episode of It's Always Sunny where Frank is uh, running. By the way, they just. You always go to Oh, It's Always Sunny. Well, <laughs> it's on it's on the tip of my brain right now because the, uh, Hulu just pulled down four of their episodes yesterday. It's always sunny. Yeah, it's always sunny. It had nothing to do with it. Hulu pulled down the episodes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Get ready. That's yeah. going to happen with everything. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, yeah, there's an episode where Frank is starting something called Wolf Cola. <laughs> it's just like it's a it's made up. He's using it to, to embezzle money and shit. Um, but Dennis says, uh, I want the title, but I don't want any real responsibility. Yeah. You know, I just want the puss. Uh, and I'm wondering if Dave just wants. No, so, no, no. It's all about power and control over there. So Dave is before this Dave was the director of the games and the director of uh, uh, programming, like all the affiliate, like Dave was CrossFit doesn't, isn't, doesn't exist without Dave Castro. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he stood up the games. He invented, you know, created that. Um, Dave was also at damn neck uh, for a bit. Um, and uh accomplished guy uh dave so this the new guy he's uh, his name of his company was like digit digitex or something they sold to oracle for 1.2 1.4 billion dollars then he ran he ran oracle's cloud for a while um very successful guy which is what crossfit needs but the problem that he's facing and everyone's like oh you know savior is here and we've got this new owner and da 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 it's like but you guys are going to have there's a couple words that CrossFit people need to understand civil and criminal. And those are two types of lawsuits that will be coming soon. Yeah. Um, against and, who specifically? Well, against the company, but okay. So, uh, against, uh, as I understand it, Greg Glassman and CrossFit HQ, I mean, like you, they're kind of intertwined. Like you don't go after one without the um, other. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, um, I think the deal is supposed to close at the end of next month, as I've read somewhere, something, whatever. But um, there's also there was just a big article in The New York Times uh, quoting victims anonymously and Andy uh, non anonymously uh, in name. And that's one of about six or seven other big articles that will be coming out over the next week or two. So. Um, there's also a lot of stuff going on in LA County right now where um, the guy from the 70s show just got lit up. Ron Jeremy just got lit up. Um, Danny Masterson. Yeah. It's who you're talking about from that 70s show. Uh, Ron yeah. Jeremy. I will say this, uh, the, the, the other two Ansel and Gort, uh, he's under it now. And Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber made an interesting move about an hour ago where he is actually sued uh, the, the two people online who accused him of sexual harassment. Uh, and he's got proof and receipts that he released that he wasn't even in the same uh, city Good or restaurants at the time. So, him. yeah. But then you've got that other, the big manager and um, producer um, who just got arrested uh, this week. So, you know, the state of California, like white males, sexual harassment stuff, like is on the menu. Like that's a special on the menu. Yeah. And apparently, like I said, I my personal interactions with Greg Glassman, I never saw any of this. Very, very limited interaction with the guy. But apparently, like, these articles are going to basically paint him as, like, the Harvey Weinstein of CrossFit. Um, so mm. it'll be really interesting. It's I mean, going to be interesting. He's at the top of his game, I guess. Yeah. Like, there's no the more biz. there's no more famous rapist than Harvey Weinstein. If Weinstein you're going to do something, you might as well do it uh, correctly. Uh, uh, you're talking about Cosby. Cosby just got, he just won an appeal. So he's going to go back to court for that. Yeah, Cosby Giorgio. can't compare with his, 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 his raping skills were probably underneath, like, you know, 
who would you say? Weinstein? Who, Cosby? Yeah. I, I think Weinstein is the most famous. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, Co- so- look, I'm not taking anything away from Cosby. He's a, he's a great rapist. A pro- very prolific rapist. Yeah, but, like, uh, I mean, he's the OJ of rape. Yes. Um, but you know. I, I thought that Cosby was he, he's still alive. Yeah, he's like 83. He's in he's jail. 82. He's still in jail. And uh, he won his appeal about uh, Isn't 48 he blind? hours ago. No, that's Allegedly. a different black guy, Baker. Yeah, that's Ray Charles. Yeah, um, he's so dead. Cosby like so old, like his eyes are like opaque. Like he's like basically blind. Well, he's, he's got some cataracts. He'll be 83 in fucking uh, 15 days or so. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, yeah. He's got some cataracts going sure on. He's got um, I've got a, a friend of mine's got a weird cat like that as well. Hairless. It's got some cataracts, but uh, okay. I try not to go down that road. Um, but let me let me ask you about this: the the community and culture of CrossFit, at right. least in my experience, I've been in it. Uh, I'd say three out of the last five years, um, okay. mostly because of where I was or what was going on. Like right now, there's a pandemic; right. nothing else is open, so I don't have a choice. I'm not a mm. gigantic fan of CrossFit. I've however, been running from police. It's a great workout. Yeah, but I think that's what all these protests are about. People don't have the gym, so it's like I'm just gonna go. Yell stuff at a cop and then run for fifteen minutes because it's a great it's a great workout. It's like Tabata. Are yeah. you familiar with Tabata, Baker? You know what it is. Every it's thirty a, seconds, it's, yeah, it's Japanese, heart rate up. It's Japanese for this fucking sucks. Japan, yeah. Japanese cardio and it will fuck your shit up. Like it, you spend fifteen he, minutes doing that shit and you'll die. Gassed. Yeah, you're you're gassed. Gassed. No, so Tabata is eight rounds of twenty seconds of work, ten seconds yeah. of rest. Yep. Yeah, it's fucked up. Go try Tabata sit ups, and your score is your lowest round. Yeah, yeah, uh, and shoot for a twenty, dude. It. It's the worst. There's, there's no it's way. brutal. But the, the culture of CrossFit, at least in my experience, a lot of people are fucking in it. Um, there's, I, we asked Christmas Abbott when, when she was on the show, and she goes, there is something uh, fucking sexual about two athletes boning in the peak of their fucking, you know. Physical ability? Yeah, dude. And uh, she was like, yeah, I've, I've boned a lot of fucking athletes. Uh, she told us on the show. And, like, I understand that. So homeboy being slapped with some sexual harassment shit in the CrossFit world, it doesn't really surprise me mm-hmm. in, a, in a weird way. Um, but he's not a CrossFitter. Oh, so he, <laughs> he doesn't have, no The guy who invented CrossFit doesn't do any CrossFit. Fuck no. He has, like a size, he has like a size seven right foot and a size 10 left foot. He's like, he's all jacked up. Oh, oh Daniel so it's Day-Lewis like Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. 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 Did he win an yeah, Oscar so he, or what happened? My left foot. Daniel, Day, Daniel Day-Lewis has won two Oscars and done 17 films in his career. That's fucking crazy. He's, well, one, of, he's it, one of the best there is. We've got, we, there's this sketch that we want him to do, and it would be almost like, I don't know if you ever, do you ever watch that show Life is Short? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Uh, do you know what Life is Short is? You ever watch that? It's Ricky no. Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant and uh, the sh- midget from from Willow. He's a What's little person. I, I, I don't want to recognize him as that. They make me uh, nervous, Warwick man. is his name. Uh, yeah, uh, Warwick uh, Davis. Warwick Davis. Yeah, yeah. He's funny as shit. So they did this one episode where, and it, the the premise of the show is Warwick Davis is an like struggling actor, trying to get work all the time, and he keeps harassing Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. And uh, one time. Uh, What's his name? Nuts from Taken. Liam Neeson shows up. Yeah. And he's like, he's like uh, talking about being a green. He's like, I played whatever. I can't be a, I played Oscar Schindler. You think I'm going to be a green grocer? Get the fuck out of here. But one of them was like, um, he just started going off on this rant about AIDS. Yeah. And, uh, oh man, you got to watch it. If you haven't seen it out there, go look up, uh, fucking. It's completely high talk right now. No, I'm not even high right now. (laughs) Go look up. Go look up. Life is short. And Liam Neeson and watch it right now. What does it have are. to do with Daniel Day Lewis? Um, just like our idea of him, uh, uh, <laughs> like a sketch of him doing shit in real life, like what he does, doing his method acting bullshit, where he just shows up, like he shows up and just starts wearing your clothes and dressing like you and shit. Daniel Day Lewis is a hardcore method actor. I yes, know that's is. what I'm saying. So how funny would it be if he went too far? If he finally snapped and he like became you? And he wouldn't leave. Like, he kept showing up to your shit. You, you get home at night, and he's already there cooking dinner with your wife. You're like, dude, yeah. get the fuck out of here. I don't know why I'm thinking about I this. Sign up for this. Yeah, but so Glassman, like, um, <laughs> the rumor is that he had polio when he was a kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, polio. Marco, yeah. polio. polio. Little um, polio legs. Yeah. And Ross, every time I see one of your films and it's shaking little polio legs, it makes me think. I know. R.I.P. Mac Miller. He used it in a song, too, by the way. Uh, Marco Polio. But yeah, it's yeah, um yeah. yeah he he uh uh 
Yeah, he no. He so he he has stuff. polio. He definitely doesn't do CrossFit, but he likes to fuck. fuck. No, but he likes fuck. to fuck. He's never done. He's never exercising. I don't think he's physically capable of it. Okay, so but he he likes to bone. He's probably going to hit with get hit with a bunch of sexual harassment suits. Is what you're saying? Which is going to be interesting on the closing because who the fuck's going to buy a business for fifty million bucks, whatever the number is, you know? And there's pending sexual harassment litigation. Well. I, allegedly, he has stepped down at this point. I'm, sh- I'm sure there would be some form of insurance on the way out the door for Maybe. this. Yeah, but still, no one wants to buy a, a, a burning house, though. No. So why not just change it? Because uh, like at, at ours, <coughs> the the owner of the, the the one that I'm at is like, man, I, I I would just rather this be called like functional fitness or Invictus or something else. What's to stop gym owners from just changing the name of it and then? CrossFit goes out like the other fads that have come and gone in the past. I think CrossFit's too big for that. Right now? Yeah. Like it, CrossFit, like, I mean, it's, you're looking at, I'm going to say 7,500 gyms worldwide. CrossFit, XYZ, whatever. Okay. Um, I don't see that changing because there's, a, there's, it, it's, it's kind of a reflection of society as a whole. It's like the people that are the most outraged are the ones making all the fucking noise. And then you go talk to some people. <laughs> And they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Who's Greg Glassman? That's no joke. Like, if you were to walk into Melissa's gym and ask all 150 members who Greg Glassman is, 30% would know. Right. I, I agree. Like, it, if it didn't come out on 60 Minutes, I wouldn't know. I couldn't tell you who the the, the cross the owner of CrossFit was. It happened to be in a story on 60 Minutes, and I was like, oh, that's the fucking guy. All right. Well, shit. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know who it was. He's not. He's not. He's not like an Elon Musk. Yeah, so like his ex-wife, he start, he founded CrossFit with Lauren Janai, uh, his ex-wife, um, and she's actually just got married to an inmate in prison who's in jail for murder. Great. She, she married a man who's in jail. Fantastic. That happens. A high school sweetheart she hadn't seen in twenty years. Great. Uh, look, I mean, is he like getting out soon? Yeah, what? is he getting out sooner? Is he in for life? Murder. Yeah. So it's, he's got an L. He's, he's in for life. No, they said he was framed. But, oh, you know, well. I mean, it's, you know, but I mean, it's it, that just kind of paints a picture of like what you're dealing with, you know, like the yeah. individual and Glassman's got, you know, like eight kids or some shit with he's like, you know, Travis Henry. That's great, actually. Or um, uh, what's the guy we were talking about yesterday? Ooh, the NFL guy that has like, oh, Cromartie. Cromartie. Anthony, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Cromartie's he's... kids. That's a uh, fantasy football name. Everybody uses Cromartie's kids in fantasy football. He's um, <laughs> he's got like fourteen kids. Cromartie, yeah, he's from Georgia, played at the University of Florida. Yeah, fucking amazing DB, amazing yeah. DB, great DB. Every cent of his money will go to child support. Uh, he'll have about eight dollars when he finishes playing. Yeah, uh, if he's done. How many kids he got? Fourteen, I believe. God. Yeah, try to tally that up. 14 kids and somehow by 15 different mothers. Yeah. I don't know how that one works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two moms yeah. hooked up on one of them they and sh- had the they baby shared. together. Yeah, yeah, they shared a baby They each together. had half the fetus and they sewed it together. They sewed it back and it together. Popped out. Yep. Travis Henry has 10 kids, uh, 11 kids from 10 women. His annual child supports 170000 <laughs> You're he, kidding me. No, no, no. And he went to jail for cocaine. Wow. Wow. Yeah, like, like he was trying to move weight. Yeah, well, 2009. Yeah, that happens. That happens when you got that much uh, child support to pay for. You gotta, you gotta move some weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gotta move some weight around here. We got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost is KillCliffCBD.com. Best in the biz, kids. Twenty five milligrams of CBD in every single can. Three amazing flavors: uh, the greatest of all time, uh, orange Kush and mango. You will not piss hot. There is no THC in any of these cans. Killcliff is the only name you can trust if you're getting into uh, the drinkables as far as CBD goes. Otherwise, you roll down your head shop. You're gonna be getting some shit from China. You don't know what the fuck is in that. You might have a little bit of Wuhan in that shit. Go to KillcliffCBD.com today and order. A case and use the promo code Drinking Bros to get twenty percent off and free shipping. That is a big deal. Uh, the shipping on cans is expensive. No shipping and twenty percent off uh, with the promo code Drinking Bros at KillCliffCBD.com. Next up, we've got MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you one hundred and fifty cent, one hundred and fifty percent of uh, your deposits back, dude. Um, <coughs> Big deals there. We're finally starting to get into some sports. 
so they say. I we'll don't see. think so. The NBA I had so. 16 of their 300 players test positive 19% for COVID. 19% yeah. uh, have tested positive for COVID. There is no fucking way the NBA season is going down. I, we did a downer of a show about it the other day, and uh, everybody's hit me up. They're like, no, man. Everybody says we're fine. We're fine. It was like, no. I got a, yeah, another call right before we got on air. <laughs> yeah. Another call that confirmed that the NFL season was going to get pushed. Yeah. I don't know why this story hasn't been released yet, um, but I'm taking a, a lot of heat for it right I don't now. Know. So are you. Do you have college football? No. Well, it's going to – It'll affect it'll college. Affect college, but yeah. As soon as it gets announced. Based, based on what a couple of uh, GMs have told us, it looks like they're going to move weeks one through four to the end of the season mm-hmm. and start at week five and cancel so, the preseason. So they can. That's for NFL. I'm talking about college. Yeah. Well, so we'll I, see. Once the NFL, my prediction is this: once the NFL drops <laughs> this, uh, the college presidents will look at it and say, "All right, if the if the pros aren't going to play in August in September, there's no fucking way we're putting kids out on the field." Now, what I heard college wise was that they were going to shift to all conference game schedules the sec was going to play nine conference games same with the big 10 and the big 12 i don't know what's going to happen in the case of like notre dame uh and especially the schools on the on the left coast because they tend to be pussies anyways but let's face it none of them compete for a national championship anyway so wipe them the out. Pac-12? yeah yeah fucking uh wipe them out our buddy from uh that does that work over there uh makes the barrels so he he was texting me this morning like oh fucking Washington this is he texted me some meme that was like a skeleton that was like waiting for Washington to win a national title or something like that I'm no. like keep on waiting brother because yeah. Pac-12 ain't winning shit no you can go ahead and Never. put that skeleton in a box six feet under Never. they're not winning for a very very yeah. Yeah. very long time yeah. but at mybookie.com you can bet on the UFC uh, which is what we've been betting on and I also I went hard on uh, Joey Chestnuts the over under is seventy one and a half. Look, everybody's asking me who I'm betting. Rostradamus really does not miss. I'm going all in on the over on Joey Chestnuts. It's 71 and a half. 71 and a half on mybookie.com. Who's Joey Chestnuts? uh, He's the the hot dog eating champion. Fourth of July, we're doing a live show. We do one every year for the hot dog eating contest in Coney (laughs) Island. They're doing it indoors this year. There will be no weather, and the dogs will be cleaner and smoother. So go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. You get 150% of your deposit back. You put in 100, you get 150 back. Last but not least, D'Anthony, we got ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Best mattresses in the biz. Everything is 25% off at ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. And as always, they got a 36 month program. Uh, where there's no interest on it, so you can pay as you go on that one, and that is applicable with the 25% off. Pillows, sheets, mattresses, adjustable bases, you name it, everything is 25% off. And if you order a mattress right now, you get two free pillows with it at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That's $170 value. Those fucking pillows are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, are you in CrossFit currently, Baker? Uh, no. Nah, nah. Girlfriend owns the gym here mm-hmm. in Ormond Beach, um, and... I've just been riding my road bike a lot, like a lot, like yeah. a lot, a lot. Like I haven't weighed in the two twenties in. Fuck, dude, I don't know when the last time was, but yeah, you, I'm. You look great. Thank you. you yeah. Do too. Uh, hey, Ormond Beach. Where Where is that by? By the way, between Flagler and Daytona. Got it. God, my parents used to live up there. Um, great little town. Yeah, they they lived on that in that that Jack Nicholas uh, community on Cinnamon Beach up by there. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. it's gorgeous. Um, it's about. I used to fly in the Daytona airport. It's about forty five minutes north of that. Super easy airport, dude. Like it, it's, it's the like best. There's a Hooters right outside there too. If you want to get wet, because the 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 racetrack is there. That Hooters is there, and those girls, man, they fucking party. Um, uh, back to Joey Chestnuts. Yeah, like this dude's gonna eat seventy one. So he's Dog. he's dogged Dirt. out at seventy four before, yeah, um, in ten minutes. Yeah, he wants to go for the record of seventy five this year. I think he's going to do it, but the over under on mybookie dot com is seventy one and a half. I don't know if he'll How get do you the record for that. Uh, so he does eating competitions all over the world, um, and that's the thing. A lot of people are saying because of COVID and the pandemic, they've been shut down. Is he going to be in shape for this? I don't know. This is the greatest athlete of our generation or any generation. Mm. There is Joey Chestnut, uh, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan. Um, only a handful of people can be mentioned in that conversation. I think Chestnut's going to break the record this year, which he owns already, Baker. Yeah. He owns already. He's, he's said it a number of times. Yeah. Uh, you know the winner only gets $10,000? Uh, 
Yeah, but it's it's about pride. They get a lot of pride. Ten thousand pounds worth of pride. So no. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So yeah. what happens to the body when you ingest seventy dogs? You shit like a goddamn like you were at Qdoba, um, and you're just. Qdoba is such a low grade. It is. That's what I'm saying. You're you're yeah, going wait, to shit that out. Doesn't ASAP. McDonald's own Qdoba? I'm not sure who owns it. Um, I went in there and I got some severe diarrhea uh, where you have to check the, where you pull the seat up and you have to wipe off the bottom of the seat because it shot upward and you're like, God damn it, man. Yeah. So it like, it follows your cheeks. Exactly. Coming out here and it's just, it's looking for surface. Yeah. Yeah, You remember uh, Castaway with Tom Hanks, the the angel wings that were on that FedEx box that Tom Hanks was looking for at the end. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It's those, it's those brown angel wings on the cheek. Yeah, Jack oh, it's owned by Jack in the Box. Oh Somehow. man, I will not tolerate any, any Jiznak and the Beezy slander here. I'm a two uh, taco guy for 99 cents at, at mm. Jack in the Box and a sourdough Jack. I could, I could fucking. I don't know pull what's one in those tacos, but I'll eat one right now. Same, dude. Oh, I think it's cat but, meat. It's probably cat meat or something like that. So, yeah. what are the other sports that you guys are that, that you got coming out soon? Like, so, what? for myboogie.com, we were we were gonna bet on the NHL. Um, NHL says they are not quarantining anybody as of today. By the way, Dan, yeah, and that is that. a colossal mistake, and mm. that will fail spectacularly. Uh, I don't. I just think they don't care. They're hockey players, man. They I understand that. So, what's my my question is this: What happens when when all of them get COVID? You're in the middle of the playoffs. Do you continue to play? Do the referees? Ta- I guess. Immunity. Yeah, I guess it depends Herb on how immunity. sick they get. Like, if you're not too sick to play, then I imagine you're going to play. And these are. People in their twenties and thirties and they're the most some of the most elite athletes in the world. I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, I, 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 I think they'll be fine. But you're, you're not going to be able to play definitely for what fourteen days worth of games. Why not in a system like this? Because it, then you have to give it to everyone. Yeah, um, Ezekiel. That's, LA, how you develop, that's how you develop herd immunity. Yes. Uh, I, look, Ezekiel LA came out and said, "Look, I had it. I had it for three or four days or whatever." And he goes, "I don't know how we're going to protect the players on this." He goes, "I, I wasn't feeling well and I had a cough and all this other shit." But he goes. What happens if everyone gets it? Are you just going to be heaving out on the field? Like, what's going to happen? And I don't think anyone has thought out if LeBron James goes down Mm. or a Kawhi Leonard. If those two guys go down, there's your league. Um, Those are your superstars. Those are the the favorites to win the title. Then what? What do you do? Because then you're just watching backup players and then hoping they don't get it. Are players going to be lying about it and saying they don't have it? Absolutely. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think money talks and bullshit walks. And I think that's what the focus is, is money. Like, because I think 30 or 40 percent of uh, look at the revenue that comes in from college athletic departments. Mm-hmm. Or, or, I'm sorry. I think 30 to 40 percent of all of the University of Georgia's revenue comes from their football. Team. Yes. Mm-hmm. As, as do most oh, universities. Oh, wow. Yes. As do most universities. If college football in particular doesn't play, it is going to bury half of the, the programs. Um, obviously, a right. Georgia so, or an Ohio State or an Alabama is going to survive, but those small schools will be fucking nuked. What I want to know is, so with, if you think about spring sports, college baseball and all that stuff, they granted an additional year of eligibility. Mm-hmm. I want to know, how does that structure work with regards to roster size, previous class, recruiting classes? Like, I mean, what's that's a daisy chain that just could – Destroy sports. Uh, I agree. And uh, this is unprecedented. I don't know what they're going to do. As a sports fan, I'm fucking depressed about it. I've been depressed about it for the last 48 hours. For hosting a sports show and letting this actually sink in for about two days after I got that that call about the NFL season, I immediately just thought about the fucking chain reaction this is going to have to all sports. Even, Even golf, for Christ's sakes. We even said on the show, well, of course, golf, you're 300 yards apart. Nobody's going to get sick. It's not true. Brooks Kapka who's one of the best golfers there is, his caddy got it. Now he can't play in this weekend's tournament because he's got a fucking quarantine for 14 days. So I don't know what you're going to do. And is it's depressing as shit because I have a feeling there's not going to be any sports on for the next three, four months. And instead, they're going to just jam this election coverage down our fucking face 24 hours a day until we hate each other as a society. I mean, I think they're doing a pretty good job of that. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's going to continue. I just wanted a distraction. I want to go home at night like Dan. I want to put on baseball, leave it on in the background. Mm. I want to watch fucking football. I don't even care what division it is. There's a bunch of fucking Saluki fans uh, that are in drinking bro <laughs> sports. I'll watch I'll watch them play. A bunch of what? Saluki fans? The fuck is that? Northern Illinois. Um I'll watch I'll watch the blind ones where you just they hear a football and it's just that 
and you follow that and then you watch them catch it. I'll watch blind football. I don't give a fuck what it is. I've been watching cornhole on the weekends on ESPN2. Which is fuck. You want to talk about a skill? It's the law of 10,000 reps. You want to talk about people that get good by practicing? Yep. Dan, watch World Championship Cornhole. I, I, um, I, I'll just take your word for it. I am the Malcolm Gladwell of Cornhole. Not, I will never, ever watch that, I promise you. It's fascinating. It I've is. Been there. It is, dude. Have you seen mini Cornhole? Yes. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen mini Cornhole. Play on a little board? I dated one in, in college. Um, oh, wait. Uh, yes, the uh, the game. Um, yes, the little tiny boards. Those keep popping up. Uh, Brewbag. Mm. Brewbag has made one, too. Oh, really? Yeah. That's that, That's... Kind of technically what you would call mini cornhole. Hmm. Um, and they're selling those as well. Um, that's, a, that's a sport that's sweeping the nation. Again, I don't know who the, the chestnut is going to be out of that organization, but uh, we need a hero in that sport to take it to the and, forefront. And you know what sport no one gives a shit about in this country? Soccer. Hmm. Oh, no. I, and nobody will until the men ever get good, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, no, it's not going to happen. Right? Unless uh, all the other sports go away. Maybe, and, and then, then people like, are forced to play like, soccer. Yeah, real athletes actually play soccer in America. I love watching the World Cup. I don't think I've missed a game since I was a kid um, because they're, it's, it's great. They're unbelievably skilled at soccer, and then you watch it here, and it's as if, you know. Yeah, you're, so you're it's like watching an ML- I'm a big Seattle Sounders fan. So if you watch like an MLS game mm-hmm. and then scroll over to like a Bundesliga or Champions League game or something, yeah. it – Literally, you can. It's like what? The it's a, it's like watching uh, like high school baseball versus a major league baseball game. Honestly, yeah, in my opinion, because yeah. like the American game is so different. They just kick the long ball all the time. There's no the, their set pieces suck. They don't move the ball. Like if you watch a European team or even a Latin American team, they move the ball up the field in a very geometric geometric fashion, and it is intended to. Uh, it's it's like a war of attrition. Right. You just want to keep possession of the ball, and eventually. Have your guy go on those runs when the fuck when you lull the defense to sleep, you fucking kick it through pass and then he can score. In America, it's just like microwave. Like I'm kicking the ball as hard as I can downfield right now. I don't give a fuck what happens. Right. They do that shit all the time. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and they hold on to the ball. Like so in Europe and Latin America, the ball they don't hold the ball at their feet. It's constantly moving. Mm-hmm. Like and it's it's unbelievable. And the so. problem is you don't have a superstar. So the guys that have been pegged. And I love using that that phrase any chance I get uh, to be the next superstar in soccer have failed. So you've you've Landon Donovan who choked in the World Cup. Uh, that guy played for ninety years on, on all of our national teams, just couldn't quite pull it off. Uh, Freddie well, Adu. Freddie Adu is supposed to be the next superstar. Freddie I Adu watched was in, supposed to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But it, yeah. so Landon Donovan and like Demarcus Beasley, those guys actually had success because they actually fucking made it to the World Cup. This last batch of fucking losers didn't even qualify. All, there no. was twenty. There was twenty-seven to in twenty-seven to one scenarios yeah. when they played Trinidad that they would qualify for the World Cup. And those scenarios involved us playing Trinidad, Costa Rica playing Panama, uh, Honduras uh, playing. Uh, uh, Fuck uh, Mexico. Of those four games, twenty of the twenty-seven different scoring outcomes, one of them meant the U.S. didn't qualify, and that's what happened. And that generation of players, like Michael Bradley and all those guys, they were giving given everything. They had everything: the support of a nation, unlimited financial resources, and they fucking choked. And now they're even worse now than they were then. Yeah, like they're 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 abysmal. Yeah, it's a, pi- a big pile of bean dip. Out I think there all we for, can uh, USA all we can really do at this point is annex a country that actually has good soccer players. Yeah, or just to, uh, look. Isn't Puerto Rico? Isn't that one of baseball. ours? Baseball. Isn't that, okay. Baseball. Yeah. Dominican. Yeah, baseball. Dominican and Puerto Rico. They play baseball. You got to get some Latinos up in this bitch uh, to play properly. That's that's um, my question. I don't think the I don't think uh, us honkies are that good. White Europeans are good. White Europeans are good because they grow up, but in not that here. Shit. Yeah. yeah, not here. Like all, our best athletes don't play soccer. I think it needs to be like Russia, where we take these children, dude, lock them away in uh, camps and cages, only <laughs> train them to be awesome. champions, and yeah, dude, make make them be champions, and then you give the family like five million dollars at the end of it if they win, you know. And yeah. unla- and, and and as long as the child is doing well, the family gets their their full allotment of ra- food rations. Yep. And if they don't do well, congratulations, you're getting a leg back in the mail. You know? Yeah, yeah like little, little little Mikhail, if he's not performing, yeah. like you're getting quarter rations this week. Exactly. Or you just show up once a day and spray the family in the eyes with bug spray or something. Like <laughs> yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's like the Gestapo. You knock on the door and then you hose down the, the fucking family, dude. But it's not even it's not even like dangerous or violent. It's just an annoying. Yeah. Like you just walk in there with like six cups of water and dump one cup of water on each person and then walk out. And then you, you walk out of the room. And um, those cups better be clean when I get back. They'll learn real quick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's why other countries are ahead of us. We don't treat athletes. We don't give them the proper steroids. Um, we don't give them the proper piss to hide the steroid test. Like all that shit. We need to start fucking juicing these kids up uh, from day one. I don't know. Uh, Uday and Kuse was saying tortured the fuck out of all of Iraq's Olympic and World Cup teams, and they didn't do so hot. They used ah, to beat the bottom true. of their yeah, feet. Right. The soccer team, yeah. they beat the shit out of the bottom of their feet yep. with batons. Um, and then, like, they wouldn't understand why they wouldn't win soccer games. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, do you remember Iraq? And I, what was, was it? The World Cup, but not the most recent one, two World Cups ago, mm. um, we played Iran. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And fucking lost. Yeah, yeah. How the fuck do we lose to them in soccer? Terrible sport. Any other sport we would win. Um, but I like what China does with their athletes, by the way. In the Olympics, if you don't win gold, they don't, they don't even post your name in the paper. <laughs> it's as if you didn't. If you get silver or bronze, they don't post your name in the paper. Well, also, you know what they do in China? When it's time for Hop Singh to get his uh, drug test, they go to Hop Singh's house, and Hop Singh's fucking cousin shows up at the door and takes the answers the doorbell and pees in the cup. That's the way it should be. Yeah, that's so. what uh, that's what Serena Williams should have done that time when she yeah, was she hiding in her the, house. Uh, she hid in the vault. She and franked it up. Yep, she had a she had one of those uh, panic rooms like Jodie Foster. Um, she hid in the panic room and said, you know. I'm on my period or I'm not feeling well or whatever when they came to, to give her the drug test. It's just so much blood. You guys can't come in right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's everywhere. Is that what she said? Yeah. No, I have no idea. No, what she, she yeah, said. Yeah, I made that she up. was <laughs> hiding in a panic room with her tennis racket. If uh, I. Wait, with her tennis that. racket. Why didn't she take that? Shut up, Ross. A dead serious. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a familiar. It's she claims she, she. So later on, the story was she claimed that she thought she was getting robbed. And so, therefore. Uh, that's why she was in the closet with a tennis racket. She was like, I took my tennis racket in there and blah, blah, blah. And, and that was the story behind her missing the drug test. Could you imagine her hitting you like in the head and face with a tennis racket? How bad that would hurt? No, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I watched a, a doc on her on HBO where she, uh, she had a, a baby. And um, I, even watching that, watching her have the baby, like I was like, there was still no emotion from her. And you were like, Jesus How Christ. funny would it be if she just tossed the baby up in the air and stroked it with just that fucking racket? Nice. Yeah, just like that well, nice. You know her Chris husband. Sound. Her husband's a little skinny beta white dude. Well, you know, you know, he's the co-founder of Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little fellow. Strange relationship. If you watch that doc, she was dating her coach all these years, and the coach is still her coach. And he's like, he was super pissed off in this documentary because she had to take time off to have a kid with her new husband and all this shit. And you see the coach steaming in the background of every fucking scene in this documentary. I'm sure he was still blasting her. You know, you know that she she had an addiction to to, to what uh, shopping online. Oh, oh we've yes, all got yes, that yes, addiction, yes. though, Baker. Let's not be real. like this, Look, motherfucker. No, you you just we don't we don't have the time or like the time off or the means that she does, right? You order three hundred packages a day. Yeah. yeah. So you you are well known for ordering random household goods and sending them to unsuspecting people for no fucking reason at all. Is that all. true? And, and, and you know what? That's a nice goddamn gesture. When I have friends that move into new homes or yep. buy housing, I send them for a week to two I, every day or every other day. I send them weird little things like a, like a like an egg cooker, <laughs> yeah, or a timer shaped like a mouse. I like I like all of that actually. No, it, it, Logan's house is full of nice little things that yeah. I would send. Like <laughs> this went on for a while. Did it really? Yeah. We had a neighbor in my neighborhood, uh, one of my wife's best friends. She was getting something every single day for 26 days. And it just, it, it was all completely random. Um, so it was like Speaking of sending oven shit. mitts, a dildo, things mm. like that. So what yeah, Mod did, what you know, remember Mod? Yeah. There was a girl, Mod switched apartments, and the girl that moved into his old apartment was, was he found desirable. Mm. And so he would order and have his mail delivered to her house. So he would have to go and get it. Is that uh is that like uh mail fraud? Like how does that work? No, no, no they I did. Mean, he's he's not stealing anything. Did I he guess. end up boning her? How did it work out? I don't know, I didn't ask him. He's private about shit like that. 
I'll text him. We'll find out. I mean, he's public enough to admit that he's shipping mail to a girl's house. I can Not imagine. Not mail, but like he'd, have, he'd order, order something online and send it to her house. Be like, hey, she'd be like, hey, this was this arrived. He'd be like, oh, gosh. They just can't get my address right, can they? I think oh. I think when you do this, then you should order things like of, of like bettering yourself, like Magnum condoms, and be like mm. super embarrassed. When Did my Magnum condoms come to your house because I had them shipped from Amazon, it's on it's on a fucking thirty day thing. I'm super apologetic. I would nice. send, I would send weird shit. Yeah, like a fucking latex Catwoman suit. Oh, it'd be great. <laughs> be like, I'm sorry. Did that arrive because? If so, could you try that on for me real quick? Yeah, you don't. Well, I, it would be for me though. Oh, you would like you would want <laughs> yeah. a, a latex. I'm cat not going to order suit. a fucking latex Catwoman suit and not wear it. Well, <laughs> that's what, disgusting. What's the weirdest thing you've ever ordered, Baker? Since this is your thing, a straight jacket. No shit. Where where can you get a straight jacket from? Uh, online. I sent it to um, an old gym that I was a member of, and there was a girl that w- went to that gym. That was completely insane. And I sent <laughs> the straight jacket because she would always like, uh, <clears throat> she's one of those people, you know? So I knew that if I sent a package to her from an anonymous person, right. that she would make a really big fucking deal out of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and great. She would open it and she would open it in front of the. Sometimes the, you just yeah. have to toss a little pebble into the pond and watch the ripples. Yeah. That's how I live my and, fucking life. Yeah. So she got, it was like a Thursday evening class and, they're like, oh my god, the secret admirer, and like opens it up, and it's a fucking straight jack. <laughs> that's great. I didn't know if it was like a sexual thing where they couldn't move their arms. Like, that's a great idea. Too. No, there's there's better ways to do that. Is there than a straight jacket? Yeah, I'd like to straight s- jacket arms go in the front like this, right? And then you know, I, I want you have to have use of your arms a little bit, just not enough to stop me from what I'm doing. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> For me, there's got to be some struggle. Otherwise, what's the point? Resistance is futile. Yeah. 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 Like there's got to be hope in the person. They have to be able to move a little bit. When you're in a straight jacket, that's a hopeless situation. Unless you're a magician that swallowed a key or whatever the fuck they do. If you're, if you have a little bit of wiggle room, it inspires hope. And that's one of the letters in the dentist system, if you recall. So (laughs) inspire hope. And then you rip that hope away. Yeah. Uh, Cosby didn't want any hope or life. He just wanted him to be lifeless. That's why I think Weinstein is a more prolific rapist. Yeah, because there were a lot. Weinstein didn't have testicles. Well, he had them. They were just inside of his body, I think. I I heard that story, but yeah, where were they? Where were the nuts? Up in his... Why? Because he's a fat piece of shit, probably. Do you lose your nuts at a certain weight? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's... He had... The woman said that he had a vagina and a penis, and he had to inject himself to get it out. That's true. The injection. Yeah. I don't remember the girl that said this, but she was fucking stunning. Like, absolutely traffic stopping gorgeous. Um, and, like, he would have to, like, inject himself. But, like, she said it a little, like, but he wasn't that, he wasn't fat enough. No, no, no. His weight he wouldn't have caused that. Okay. I, I really don't know, but it, it does seem. He's got like, some type of fucked up and shit. Yeah. yeah. And the he, whole thing with him with, with the walker was fake. That oh yeah, a, yeah, of course, prop. of course. And you know, you know that you know the giveaway on that was. You know why people have tennis balls on their walkers? It's to slow them down, right? No, it's be, it's when the the, the clacking the, noise. Yeah. Nope. When a, when a walker comes, there's little uh, rubber gaskets that go over the end, uh-huh. of it. and people put tennis balls there when that rubber thing wears away and they can't afford to get new ones, so they just shove a tennis ball in there. Mm. So dipshit, who's worth tens of millions of dollars, puts <laughs> brand new tennis balls. Also, you could tell by the way he walked. Right. So a person in a walker is going to be basically their their body is going to be in the walker to support them. Yeah. Whereas he not, not leaning forward. Yeah. That doesn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Let me ask you this: a walker, Dan, is that going to do it? That gives you enough hope. Like you know, you come up from behind a girl, rip her walk walker away. She could still move her arms, um, but her legs would kind of be lifeless. You know what? It it took forever for us to invent the walker that had the seed in it. Mm-hmm. The, the new type, not not the old. Uh, uh, like silver one, but the new ones that are red and black. Sure. Like what? What? And and it has like the fucking brakes. On yeah. It. Why did that take so long to invent? That I all made know. sense. Yeah. Like if Evolution you're using products, man. You don't dump everything you got all at once, man. You got to string it out. It's yeah. True. I don't think. I mean, this this is. I don't think that's the case here. I think maybe people are just dumb. Uh, I give, I give maybe eight out of ten to the Walker scenario. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. know I know that I like that allows them to do shit, but I can take it away. What about crushes? Yeah. Um, not severe enough. 
Okay. I need him to be more injured than that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So. Uh, are we talking full fucking quad, or are we talking para- No, because I don't want to do all the work. I don't want to do all the work. All right. What's the problem? I mean, like, I just... Let's talk about NASCAR. Y'all talk, y'all talk about a couple of things. Y'all mentioned a few things that freaked me the fuck out. One, what? handicapping this. That, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. And then two, y'all talked about midgets earlier, which freaked mm-hmm. me out because I think it's contagious. So you, you've never had sex with either? Under no fucking circumstances. I don't know that I've ever been in a room with a midget for longer than like maybe five seconds. Uh... If I'm sitting, if I am sitting in a place and one enters, I will be exiting. Nothing against them. It's just that's just a me thing. I got to get the fuck out. I worked with a midget for three months straight, and he was in the hotel room next to me. Are you talking um, about homeboy from Pirates of the Caribbean? Oh no, that's a different midget. Shit, yeah. I've worked with. I've done four movies with midgets. Come yeah. to think of it, um, fuck me. Every, everyone I know is it's a, a weird realization. Every, on a every single one I know, including the guy I went to high school with, was a total drunk asshole. That, so, oh no, two, two, one I went to high school, and one that is the uh, he was the mascot for the Greenville Growl hockey team there, uh, the ECHL really? team. Yeah, he's like they would just. I mean, I would be. I'm I'm a drunk piece of shit too. So. You know, it's weird you say that, but all the midgets were fucking rocked. So if every you like night, to, if you like to drink rocked. and you only weigh like 70 pounds, you're going to get fucked up all the time. Yes. Like, I like to drink. I just happen to be a big dude. No, yeah. no, no, no. Midgets don't weigh. No, no, no. They're way heavier than that. Yeah. Look, they've got some weight to them. And, and so homeboy, one of them pulled out his dick after because he got so drunk, he pulled out his dick and, and very angrily to mm-hmm. like a, a room full of 20 people. And, and half of them were girls. He goes, mm. uh, "You all, you everybody calls me a midget." He goes, "My dick's bigger than all yours." And he pulled out a fucking hog, and I was like, "Eh, all right." You know, I, did you I, grab him by it and then fucking swing him like a lasso? No, your I, I slow clapped him. <laughs> like I let him know that I appreciated it, and uh, you know, it was probably on his mind. I would have grabbed it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, how could and then you? He talked you about the handicap stuff. You know, like yes. That gives me the heebie-jeebies. Too. Why, uh, dude? You've you're... never fucked some form of you, handicap. You've half of your friends are fucking Fuck handicapped. No, Ross. No, goddamn it. Not even. Not even. No. Okay. Half of your Zero friends. Zero interest. Half of your friends are, are fucking handicapped from the war. Dumb, dumb. I'm not fucking them either. Well, we'll see. Yeah. That, yes, we will. Time will tell. I think my the, the closest like I never I, I've never had sex with someone in a wheelchair, but like a, a broken leg where it went all the way up to the hip, like it had oh. one of those hip things. So it was okay, hard so Alyssa, to get around that. Alyssa cast. tore her Achilles in last July. Mm-hmm. So I mean, is that count as handicap? She no. limped for six, seven months. How high up was that cast? Mid calf, probably. No, up to the knee, man. Yeah, oh, that was it's no, that the, was, it's the it full was, tall boot. Yeah, you got to when you tear the. AC, you're, you're getting AC, close. Uh, you probably need about another nine, ten inches on that cast, and then I'd, I'd give it to you. But uh, you know, uh, no. it depends on the person you are. So we have we have, we have a mutual friend to all of us. I'm not going to say who it is who uh, had to take off a girl's leg, fake leg, to have sex with her, and he said the the experience was amazing. Pulled off her fucking leg. And I, and I was like, what was so amazing about it? And he goes, I could get an extra inch in. Because he goes, you're not worried about you know pulling two legs apart. He's just like, one just took right off. And he goes, I can get the whole fucking dong in there. We have a disgusting friend. I'll leave it up to the audience to figure out who that is. Let's talk about that. Well, actually, both of those people in that story are friends of mine. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> Do you really? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> um great girl yeah she is. <laughs> great girl great girl you love her she is, no she's fuck she is a con <laughs> she has done some of the most amazing things uh that physically one can do on this planet i don't even no. know the person i just know the story and the story came from someone else who was in the other room and saw saw and heard this go down through the wall and he he, he called me he was like man you're not gonna fucking believe this and I was like, what? And he goes, you know, so-and-so. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, dude, she didn't have, like, she only had one leg. He had to take off the prosthetic, and it was a whole fucking thing. And I was like, oh, boy. Uh, greatest story of yeah, I'm just heard not prepared. I'm not prepared for that. those levels of uncomfortability. Well, you keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, and it might happen one day, you know? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Not with that fucking hoodie on. Um, it's a great hoodie. Let's talk about NASCAR. Sure. Um, God so damn it. They, they finally released the picture 
Yeah. And this is a noose. Like, there's no question about it. Somebody took sort some time. Of. It's not, no, it's not, sort it of. is not sort of. This, sort of. this is a fucking noose. If you were going to tie sort a, of a hitch, he, here's no, why, it's not. There's seven fucking lines right here. Here's why, it here's why I say Bowman's it's, knot in it. It doesn't have a Bowman's knot in it. It's got to have a Bowman's knot because you're not breaking someone's I know. neck. So he, that I know, but somebody went to the trouble to try to tie a noose. Otherwise, they would have tied a fucking a hitch. So he, here's why I'm, I'm saying sort of on this one. Um, I saw the picture, the original picture, right? The one that NASCAR released, they zoomed in as close as they possibly could and made the noose look like it was gigantic. The original picture, the noose is about the size of a can of Truly. And you're like, man, yeah, we're really fucking playing games now in the media with this shit. Like, it was very, very tiny. If it was connected to the garage, I, I, I have a hard time believing that was for Bubba Wallace or, or well, no, there's someone no who way, thought that. There's no way it was for him because it's been there for fucking eight No, I, I understand that. But I have a hard time believing that, uh, hey, man, this is a threatening type of thing to kill someone. Well, it, it was very small, and they expanded the picture. Let's, let's, and back, it very let's back up because he didn't even know about it until NASCAR came to tell him about it and showed him the picture. So is that right. what happened? Yes. So NASCAR came to him. Yes. Okay. Yes. President of NASCAR Phelps came. So where the car was, drivers aren't even allowed there. Yeah. So the only people that are allowed there, are, it's 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 very heavily guarded. It's where the work is done on the cars and all, massive security, et cetera. All right. The problem that I have with the whole situation is NASCAR has been hemorrhaging fans for two years. Everyone knows that. Like just massive. Correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, people hauling ass away from the sport. Um, and so they're the, the pandering. So they outlaw the Confederate flag being displayed at NASCAR events. All right. Um, why? Where did that come from? Was it, did anyone ask for that or did you just lob that out there on your own? Uh, no, that was okay. Bubba Wallace asking for that. Yes. Before the news thing? Yes. Before, yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I think so, that, I think that's why, like if you look at the series of events, that's probably why both the organization and him personally were more sensitive to this issue. Maybe. Uh, but again, well, I mean, he he didn't have the benefit of knowing that it was from October, right? Like he got he get, he's a guy that is the only black driver, and he gets told that by NASCAR, the organization, like why would they fucking be trying to start some shit? Right? Because it's in their best interest to not start shit. They fucked up huge right here. Uh, well, he, so and he gets told he gets it. told that, and then he gets shown that picture right there. Like fuck. Sure. So now that you said that, if it was the head of NASCAR that brought this to his attention, yeah, this fuels even more fucking fire to the conspiracy that, you know, not only did we want to wipe out the Confederate flag yeah. and any form of racism, but we really want to drive the point home that this is a all inclusive sports. And, Maybe. uh, um, because otherwise if I'm NASCAR, I'm the head of NASCAR and I, and I see and or hear this, I don't fucking say shit. No, I call the FBI immediately and say, or and issue a gag order to the entire organization. Yeah. Like, Hey, find out where this, cause you need to know where it came from just in case. Because otherwise, the sport and sake. Bubba Wallace now look like fucking assholes. And, and there's no going back. On honestly, well, aside from his, I, I don't think Wallace initially did anything wrong. No, no, but he, did, he did because what happened when they found out that the when they found out that it was there for since back in 2019. Yeah, he then goes on the fucking Don. So he goes on the fucking View. Yeah, number one and starts talking shit about people that are questioning you know this and like just. You know, saying that they're haters and they're ignorant and all this shit, and then he go and then when they find out that hey, that thing, the FBI concludes their investigation that it wasn't a, a noose and it wasn't targeted for him, uh, and that it had been there for years. Then he goes on Don Lemon that night with yeah. that information and starts running his fucking mouth again. And when Don Lemon's kind of sort of calling you out, you, you, I mean, dude, come on, man. And so yeah. he digs his heels in, digs his heels in even further. Now, his statements that he's released since then, if he'd have done that initially, like, huh, thank God this was a big misunderstanding and we'll all, mm. you know, gladly take a little bit of embarrassment finding out that this wasn't what we thought it was, you know, um, that's the thing. That's a uniting statement. That's something that all of society, I think, can get behind and kind of be like, yeah, this guy's actually got his shit together. I agree with that. But yeah. The damage, I think, is, I mean, I think they have fucking royally pissed off their family. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's NASCAR. Like, I don't, again, even like Wallace's initial response to finding out that it wasn't targeted towards him should have been a lot more thoughtful. The shit that he said on oh, Don yeah. Lemon that night and then the shit he said on The View the next day was fucking stupid. 
Like it, yeah. it just it was stupid. But uh, he's getting thrown under the bus by NASCAR. Like everybody on Earth is either someone who never watched NASCAR in their life and now they're a fan, or actual NASCAR fans who are who are gonna call him Bubba Smollett for the rest of his life or Jussie fucking Wallace yeah. for the rest of his goddamn life. He's done. As a fucking influencer with regard to race relations, he's done. Because NASCAR, which is owned by white people, fucked him over. Yeah. Like they, it's but, it's it's the fucking disease of wokeness. You know what I mean? Well, they tried they too hard huge, to yeah. be woke. Yeah. It's they, so stupid. They made a huge production about what really sucks was the FBI concluded their investigation before the fucking race where the entire crew, the, all the other racers basically walked an entire lap of solidarity with him. He runs with Black Lives Matter on the side of his car. Mm-hmm. FBI was already done with their investigation. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I think it was an, the NASCAR just like some Hail Mary of a fucking PR attempt, just like just a. I I've got a theory on it, man. It's called fucking oppression FOMO. Like anybody that any company even now, it's it started with like young white liberals. Like you don't get oppressed as a young white liberal. You live in the fucking suburbs. Your parents are rich, and all you hear about is the suffering of everybody else. But you, because life is difficult, and that's true, you feel shitty a lot, and you, you don't have anything to blame it on, and it makes you feel like a fucking dick. Right. Like you, uh, uh. The song Lorazepam on Danny Worth on Asking Alexandra's new album starts off like uh, it, it basically says, I've got no problems. Sometimes I just fucking hate myself. And that is a common, commonly held belief. Anytime you graduate from just keeping yourself alive to having a comfortable life and, you know, looking inward, it happens. But there's no rational fucking connection between that and adopting the suffering of other people as your own. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we should feel empathy for sure, but you don't like co-op that shit. You, you don't. You don't like fucking go scream if you're a white liberal teenager. Like I saw again last night, screaming into the face of black police officers. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, do you understand what's happening at all in life, or are you just doing this shit? I think it's moved to companies now, like companies that didn't have some event or some kind of thing where they could fucking openly show how fucking woke they are. Yeah. Are feeling it right now? They feel marginalized. Or whatever the fuck. There's plenty of shit you could do. NASCAR, go spend some of your money. Stop trying to manufacture shit and go spend some of your money and help people. You fucking yeah, dicks. it's the Outrage Olympics. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna keep continuing. Uh, Baker, thanks for being on today, buddy. Absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me. Yep. we appreciate it. Uh, for Baker Levitt, it's Anthony, it's Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. <laughs>